In today's class, we will discuss about pulse wave Doppler. Pulse wave Doppler is a Doppler format. The other Doppler formats are pulse wave Doppler, continuous wave Doppler, color flow mapping, spectral Doppler and tissue Doppler. So pulse wave Doppler, the in pulse wave Doppler, uh, a short intermittent burst of ultrasound are transmitted into the body. So there is a single transducer which transmit intermittent burst of sound waves into the uh, into the heart so this is actually the doppler is mainly for the uh, flow or the physiological aspect of heart is studied in doppler while the anatomical aspect is studied in the 2d echocardiography so in pulse wave doppler there is a single transducer which emits short burst of ultrasound waves and this ultrasound waves uh, will be we will study the ultrasound waves which reach at a particular sampling point so we are we can select that sampling point in the 2d image and the uh, the transducer will receive the uh, reflected waves reflected sound waves from the rbcs from that sampled point only that is even though the uh, RBCs in between uh, the, the transducer and the sampling point also absorbs and uh, reflects the ultrasound waves. Only the, the transducer will receive or it study only the reflected ultrasound waves which are coming from that particular sampling area. That is the pulsed Doppler instrument only listens to a fixed and very brief time interval after transmission of the pulse. That is they have the property of range resolution. So this is the characteristic of pulse wave Doppler. So the pulse wave Doppler imaging interrogates the distribution of blood flow values within a relatively limited region. While continuous wave Doppler it has two transducer one transducer will be continuously emitting sound waves so these doppler are basically sound waves so it will be continuously emitting sound waves and uh, the other transducer will continuously re uh, re receives the reflected trans uh, sound waves from the rbcs in through the the whole, that straight line through the through which the uh, ultrasound waves travel so so this is like uh, the whole line of tissue from the transducer up to the, uh, uh, the uh, end of the heart. Uh, even the tissue also. Mainly this is uh, moving RBCs. So the RBCs along the whole line uh, will receive and reflect. And the whole of this uh, reflected sounds are received by the receiving transducer in continuous wave Doppler. While pulse wave Doppler listens only to that particular sample volume. But the main limitation of the pulse wave Doppler is that there is a maximum velocity beyond which it cannot be accurately resolved. To understand that, we should understand pulse repetition frequency, aliasing, Nyquist limit. So, we will see one by one. What is pulse repetition frequency? The number of pulses transmitted from a Doppler transducer each second is called a pulse repetition frequency. So this is like how frequently, so this is, uh, this will be equal to the sampling rate that we will, uh, we will understand these concepts from, from the next slide. Sampling rate is an important determinant of how accurately the system resolves the frequency information. So we are like, uh, See, this is the waveform which is the reflected uh, sound wave from the uh, RBCs. So, this is a reflected sound wave from the RBC and uh, this, uh, the whole wave is, so this is the baseline and the time, duration of this wave is up to here is 1 second that is, so in 1 second, there are three waveforms. So the frequency of this wave, the wave is 3 hertz. So 3 hertz is the frequency. So in this 3 hertz wave uh, signal has been received from uh, a particular sampling area. So this uh, pulse wave Doppler transducer has to uh, measure this 
has to recreate and has to exactly recreate this waveform. For that, uh, this waveform has to be sampled. That is, um, for example, if we have to exactly recreate this waveform, we what we have to what we can do is we can draw an x and y axis and we measure the distance of each of these points from the x and the y axis and plot it over over here and uh, plot it over here and we will exactly draw that wave here. So we can uh, measure each of the distance of the, each of the points from there and we can draw the waveform like this. So this is a lot of measurements is required. So our aim is to with the minimum number of measurements we have to recreate this waveform. See we know the frequency is 3 hertz and we are measuring this, uh, this wave at a, at a sampling rate of 3. That means we are sampling at 3 points. So if we are sampling this waveform at 3 points. See, we are sampling it at 3 points. If we are sampling it at 3 points and I am drawing 3 line, uh, three points and uh, I am uh, joining these lines together. See, I will get a waveform like this. This is no, nowhere similar to the original waveform. I am not able to recreate the original waveform. See, I am sampling it at a slightly higher rate. So, if I sample it at, at exactly at the same frequency as that of the original wave, I am not getting the original wave. I am increasing the frequency to 4 hertz. If I am sampling at 4 different points and try to recreate the waveform, I will get a waveform. I will get a line like this. It is nowhere similar to the original waveform. I am trying to sample the waveform at 6 points. That is 2 times the frequency of the waveform. So, the frequency is 3 hertz. I am sampling at 6 points. And if I sample at 6 points, I can re create a waveform which is almost or almost similar to the original waveform. So from this we can understand that the wave has to be sampled at least two times the frequency of the original wave that is pulse repetition frequency or sampling frequency should be at least two times of the frequency of the original waveform. So if in other way if we are using a pulse repetition frequency of 6, the maximum uh, wave, uh, maximum frequency we can sample is 3 hertz. And that 3 hertz is known as the Nyquist limit. So from this diagram we can understand that if we are uh, trying to recreate a 3 hertz waveform, we should sample it at least at 6 points. Then only we will be able to create that is 2 times the frequency we have to sample. So, pulse repetition frequency is 2 times the frequency and Nyquist limit is the minimum frequency that can be sampled properly through the that uh, Doppler. So, that is known as um, Nyquist limit. So, to accurately represent a given frequency, it must be sampled at least twice of that given frequency. So, we have to for a given frequency, it must be sampled at least twice. So, for a 4 hertz, it should be sampled at least minimum to recreate the original is 8 hertz. So, that is PRF is 2 times the pulse repetition frequency. So, this from this we can able to find out. If we know the pulse repetition frequency, we will be able to find how much is the Nyquist limit. If the pulse repetition frequency is 10, the Nyquist limit is up to 5 hertz we can accurately sample. So, Nyquist limit is pulse repetition frequency by 2. So, this is important. This is a concept which was developed by Shannon Nyquist sampling theory. Or two scientists, Claude Shannon and Nyquist. This has so much applications, not only in Doppler, also in digital image creating a creation and all. It is used widely in day-to-day uh, -day practice by the digital creators and all. So, uh, pulse wave Doppler, uh, the, uh, the pulse, uh, repetition frequency we will be able to identify the minimum frequency we are able to sample so frequency we know um, velocity equal to frequency into wavelength so from that we will be able to calculate the uh, velocity also so particular beyond a particular velocity uh, we cannot uh, sample uh, in pulse wave doppler because of this uh, Nyquist limit and the limitation of pulse repetition frequency
so um, so what happens if we if we uh, the pulse repetition frequency is low or the nyquist if we are sampling at a uh, what happens if the velo uh, if we are sampling at a frequency uh, lower than the two times the frequency this is here for example here we are seeing this pink wave pink wave we are uh, we are trying to recreate that pink wave in pulse wave doppler so and we are sampling it only at so if the uh, frequency if it is a one second wave we know here it is one two three four four is the uh, four hertz so in order to properly recreate it we should sample it at least eight times as we have already discussed in the previous slides but here they are sampling only at five times so that is the sampling frequency is uh, low so we are uh, erroneously getting a waveform which is at a lower uh, frequency so this is known as aliasing and the effect of aliasing is so what is aliasing inability of a pulse wave doppler system to detect the higher frequency doppler shifts because of the limitation in pulse repetition frequency and the lower nyquist limit the upper limit of frequency that can be detected by a given pulsed system is nyquist limit which is one half of the pulse repetition frequency so what happens in aliasing so in this see this is the sample we are focusing and we are emitting the pulse waves uh, this uh, ultra uh, the doppler signals are being emitted and here the frequency is more than the liquid nyquist limit here the, we have taken the velocity as 76.9 cm per second and here the velocity is greater than 76.9 cm per second in that case the doppler will give a uh, give erroneously low frequency waveforms and that will result in wrapping around the baseline so this happens this is a common problem with the pulse wave doppler this is the known as aliasing erroneously low frequency waveforms detected and that will wrap around the baseline and this phenomenon is known as aliasing and also it occurs in color flow also because even though the velocity is moving forward even though the jet is moving forward because of aliasing this will give the color will give a false impression that the jet is moving towards the probe it will give a color of red which shows that the jet is moving uh, towards the probe that is actually aliasing uh, which is giving a erroneously false frequency wave because of the limitation in pulse repetition frequency and the nyquist limit hope everybody understood the basic concept of pulse wave doppler aliasing pulse repetition frequency and uh, nyquist uh, uh, nyquist limit thank you